hello, hello everyone, also from my side. What a great bar from Molly was rising to the presentation. I will, myself, I'm Konstantin Kachuk. I'm going, I'm a startup operator at Protocol Labs, and I will go you through more details about IPFS and Filecoin and how they shape the future of Web3. So today's agenda from my side would be, first of all, the core concepts of IPFS and Filecoin. Then I will talk in details about the tool for builders. We've already seen a great presentation on what are the opportunities building with Filecoin, and I will give you the exact tools which you can use straight away to make your solution better using distributed technology and IPFS and Filecoin. And then I will tell you also a bit of a highlights, what to build, what is coming in Web3, and what's the most hot topic right now. So starting with the core concepts of IPFS and Filecoin, yeah, so we are somewhere between Web2 and Web3. And what exactly Web3 is? Let's suffice that it's the evolution of the internet, it's the next step of the internet, and it makes web read, write, and trust. Trust being an operative thing here, and it is achieved through a verifiability and a whole bunch of underlying primitives and technology that builds up to that. So verifiable data is essential to a truly distributed system, uh, and data as itself is one of the big pieces of Web3 stack puzzle, which comes on the slide here. There is a lot, a lot to be updated. Uh, development in Web3 is just immense right now. There is a lot of new technologies coming up. There is a, more, a lot of, lot of solutions coming to the Web3 stack, but still uh, the storage itself is one of the core points of any operation happening on Web3. And IPFS and Filecoin is here to also support building uh, or transitioning for Web2 to a more resilient, accessible, scalable, and also cheap internet storage, and not only storage, but general uh, internet operation that we have. So also, I would say that IPFS and Filecoin is here not only for storage anymore, we are also building the Web3 architecture, which surely will support very, very soon the layer one blockchain coming with an FVM, and we also can easily put ourselves into the part with off-chain storage, which is also what IPFS can do. And coming from this, more of an overview, we are truly right now in this transition from Web 2 to Web 3, and some of the companies are more to the left, some of the companies are more to the right, but what we are all aiming for is a truly distributed internet where the data, information, and knowledge First of all, there are a couple of most important assets which we have today, and we want to preserve them. We want really to have them in the hands of people. So how to do this, how to build this uh, resilient, and how to make sure that we actually own the data and it's not centralized and not blocked from us and not used on our behalf. That's the topic of the presentation which I'll go through right now. So if we are aiming for distributed data, we want to have a solution, first of all, which is resilient, which is performant, which is scalable. At the same time, it should be secure, efficient, trustlessness, and it should be censorship resistant. Nowadays, we see a lot of the failure points in the existing centralized solution where, while having a single point of failure, it immediately leads us to the problems like censorship, governmental, organizational, and there is no, uh, the, and the data which apparently we should own by ourselves is, a, is monetized by the companies which have the access to it or the central access and monitoring to it. Instead of that, we actually want to have a user-powered ser uh, user powered service which ensures that we have privacy of our own data and at the same time the data has to be self-verified and known siloed. So in the next 25 minutes, I will tell you in details about what IPFS, a uh, peer-to-peer hypermedia protocol for content addressing, and what is Filecoin, the world's largest decentralized storage network, and how they're working together to bring this distributed internet of Web3. And also, I will tell you that file and folders are not something boring, and they're a really exciting topic to work on. So first of all, IPFS. IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System. Let's break it down in two parts. So first of all, files and systems, these are files and folders which you traditionally operate on your computer. Uh, file could contain any content, and essentially folder is also just a table of the content inside with the files. So why interplanetary though? Because it was conceived as a way to upgrade the web in a way that it would still work if our network stretches across planets. The idea behind is that if you are on Mars and you are 
uh, wishing to take some data from Earth, it will take at least one hour to request uh, the information down to Earth and backwards. Instead, if you have uh, content hashed on the Mars already, then you don't need to call the Earth anymore. You just retrieve it from the nearest node on Mars, and that's how IPFS works. It allows you to retrieve the content from the nearest node and from the cache solution ac all across the IPFS network instead of just referring to the central point somewhere on the database on Earth. And that's very handy. Uh, in order to implement that, we have to do the content addressing, which is IPFS really addresses the content by what it is instead of where it is. Molly already gave you a brief explanation, but if you think about uh, content addressing as it is, uh, right now in computers we do it all the, all the time. We have a path, uh, uh, we have structure of folders, and we get an index of a certain item. We replace it uh, with a content identifier. Instead of asking where the content is locating, we don't need to go to a library as, and then just say, okay, I need the location of the book. We really go for the book itself, for the content. Here, we give you a content identifier, which is a unique fingerprint of what you are looking for, and it tells you what you are looking for. And it tells also the network what you are looking for, and the network itself resolves the best location to serve it from, either your backpack or the nearest library or the Amazon shop. It doesn't matter for us, you can serve it from anywhere, but we give you the opportunity to discover the objects regardless of the allocation. And that's how we do the CAD itself. CAD in itself is a cryptographic hash function, which is SHA-256, uh, SHA which allows you to uh, encrypt any object into a, a string, which gives you a unique identifier. And the same content always resolve you the same CAD, and the content CAD can be reproduced at any time from the original content. This gives us this layer of verifiability. When you retrieve a file, you can also uh, uh, provide a hash of it once more and then validate if the object you received is matching the hash you originally requested. And that brings us a lot of, a lot of functionality uh, to making the web really uh, secured in the way that we can receive the objects which we are actually interested in. Also, uh, the CAD provides us the opportunity to encrypt it on your level, so there is no secret source beca behind the IPFS which actually specifies how to encrypt uh, a certain files. No, that's actually happening on your side, on the, uh, on the user side, so regardless of the computer where the file is being encrypted, it's always uh, returning you the same CAD which is based exactly on your content. And that's the beauty of it. If you think about not the files, but the folders, it's, the, it's doing exactly the same thing. So a folder is just a special kind of a file which lists other files inside of it. And the core principle remains the same. You can create a CAD out of your folder and it will be pointing to exact number of the files or exact list of the files which you have inside. And at the same time, the files inside could also be the CADs themselves so that we reduce the number of overall stored files on the internet and at the same time deduplicate the need for storing immense amount of data. Let me briefly explain you how it works in life. So on the bottom line we have multiple objects, each of which uh, having their own CADs. You see the fingerprint and the colors are explaining the uniqueness of the CAD. So we have a root CAD of a folder which contains multiple files uploaded by different users. Uh, here, the benefit of Merkle DAGs or the direct acrylographs coming in the, into the help, uh, we are, they are helping us to create a graph dra uh, data structure which, in which uh, each node is content addressed. So we exactly know what are the objects inside of each element, and we can traverse the graph to receive a certain point or an object inside the IPFS first file, then folders, and folders, and folders. The beauty of it comes when a user wants to create a new folder with a list of files, part of which were already existing in the network before. So you see a new user on the very right, which creates a folder which contains only two objects out of all four. He creates a folder which points to the same objects, but since we are pointing to CIDs, the files are already on the network, and then it just creates a new pointers, but the object could be already stored, uh, could be already served from the IPFS network. Therefore, it reduces the redundancy of uploading many, many of the same type of objects, and you can retrieve it at any point of time straight away from the IPFS network, from the closest peer which contains and has your data. 
So this is how CAD working. It also provides you opportunity to deduplicate the files on the network and verify the content if the CAD is changing. This is how one folder works. Then we go to the network itself. First of all, we need to understand that there are multiple, multiple of peers on the peer-to-peer -peer network which stores pieces of your data, pieces of the content, and allows you to uh, retrieve it from the closest uh, CAD, we, uh, closest peer which has your content. So we have a huge swarm, a network of peers, and for each peer, it's very important that it has to be first discoverable and it must be routable. So we need to know how to reach each and every peer in the network so that whenever you are looking for a content, you can really point to the certain peer and request the data from it. That's where the content routing distributed hash tables comes in place. Uh, the distributed hash tables is maintained by multiple peers, but it's only a small number of rows uh, which are stored within each peer, and those are maintained not for the whole network itself, but more a piece is a fragmented part of it which allows to reduce the load on each particular node. And we have a very simple two-column table which provides us with a key and a value stored, and this you can think of as a, ho uh, as a phone book but the phone book where everyone allows, uh, where everyone maintains it together. So you have a name and you have a number of a person. And it's very nice because uh, also a number in itself, you can really call it directly, which is partially how CAD works because you really address it to the, uh, to the person who stores your data, not to a server which knows where the person is located. And IPFS works exactly on the same way where uh, when you request the data from this uh, DHT table, the peer uh, which you requested it from either can serve the data directly to you from his uh, um, storage, or if he doesn't know where the data is located, then he can ask nearby peers asking uh, if you have the same data which uh, my user requested. And we also know uh, approximately where the closest peer which can serve you the data is located so that we don't need to go through the whole swarm on the network. We rather just uh, request the points or the peers which are most probably, which are more likely to have your data than the other one. And in this case, uh, peers are maintaining the DHT table and declaring where the peer ID which provides a specific CAD and how to connect to these peers. So then peers all the time can query the DHT table to find which peer is providing which content. So this is how the IPFS works, this is how the swarm and the network works, but how, what does it bring to the actual users of the IPFS network? So using IPFS in the wild, first of all, obviously you can run your own node. Then you can request the data from your node and uh, be, um, uh, make it available over the IPFS network, but if you're far from the node, then it will not be very reliable or it will be long to retrieve and so on. So then, you can maybe run your own network of the nodes and then the infrastructure and the team to support uh, building this network. Or you can pay a pinning service to pin your content on their nodes, such solutions as Pinata, Temporal, and Fura, and many more. And then you just hope that your content becomes popular enough that other nodes will pin it. So does that sound to you as a really decentralized and reliable web? To me, not really. You really should not rely on someone's good faith in order to store your data, and that's exactly where Filecoin comes in place. Filecoin incentivizes persistence and verifiable storage designed for Web3. Filecoin uses the same process as IPFS for resulting content identifiers on Filecoin, and these are exactly the same CIDs we just talked about. Moreover, IPFS is a storage layer agnostic, and that's because the magic of IPFS CIDs they become in the property of the data itself, so that regardless of what solution do you want to use for permanence of your data, whether it will be a file coin or a cloud solution, or maybe both, or the, any amount of solutions which you want to develop, we still provide you the same content identifier, which is independent of us even, so that regardless what's happening for the future, we still can detect or trace the content by, uh, trace the data by its content. In fact, uh, Filecoin network is based on time-limited deals, 
which allow you to store the data. So whenever you put an object or an IPFS object to the Filecoin deal, you make a deal with a storage provider to store your content and ensure cryptographically that your store content is persistent and available through, through the time of the deal on the network. It gives you this reliability and verifiability of the content persistence over a long time and makes sure that your content stored redundantly and verified by network via proof of replication, which proves the storage provider is storing a unique copy of original data, and proof of space time, which proves that data is stored continuously over time. We run uh, checks for each data every 24 hours, which guarantees us and guarantees the final user that his content is persistent. We really run it also redundantly, so regardless if one content provider or storage provider is losing your data for some of the reasons, we still have redundant copies on the network which uh, will be able to serve you and replicate again to the minimum required amount. For most of our solutions, we use at least five redundant copies so that your data is always secure with IPFS and Filecoin and you really can retrieve it whenever you want. And that's where I can say that IPFS is really loving Filecoin. IPFS here is for fast and flexible retrieval with the gateways, local nodes, and browsers. And Filecoin is for the persistence and verifiability. It's actually amazing components and working together. And Filecoin really commoditizes the storage, which is an IPFS complement. This is like, for me, milk and cereal, or ink to printers, or storage to IPFS. Now, we're happy to, I'm happy to give you a little bit of a highlight for the tools for builders. And uh, let's start with web-free enabled architecture. We really want to have uh, a solution which is not dependent on one centralized approach or one centralized logic. Therefore, there is a lot of different layers that serve different functions. We have, first of all, the front-end layer, which could be Web2, uh, existing solutions you already know. It could be also a web-free layer. Then we have a logic which uh, multiple of the smart contract networks or layer one solution networks already have. And that's where also we will be able soon to place Filecoin with the smart contracts and a VM coming. And then we have a storage helpers. Uh, storage helpers serve you with a handy tools which allow you to do the Filecoin dealing and storage on IPFS network with an ease. And that's what our advice generally is to use the storage helpers directly so that for your applications it's very handy and simple to operate uh, the IPFS and Filecoin networks. So what are some of the storage networks or storage helpers that can give you the opportunity to build on top of IPFS and Filecoin? First of all, there is a web-free storage solution. It's designed for Filecoin and IPFS storage. It's familiar and it has familiar and simple interfaces, and it's a production-level storage and retrieval, uh, which provides you with the retrieval uh, reliability and performance. It's very simple to use. There is only an API key, uh, which you need to generate from uh, registering on the website, and then uh, you can call the API key and store the, all, all your data from your traditional web solutions on IPFS and Filecoin. We also provide, this is also provided from protocol labs directly, so we provide one terabyte always for free, and then it's possible to extend it for your specific solutions, and we are more than happy to support you developing on web free storage. Then, uh, one of the subset or a specific tool which was also developed for the NFTs directly, which is NFT.storage. We treat NFTs as a public good which should be available for people all the time. Uh, therefore, uh, this particular solution is completely free and it's very, very easy to use so that artists, developers, and creators of all kinds on the web are, uh, have a handy tool with almost no code to update from their content so that their content, whatever they create, is uh, reliably and redundantly stored on the web. Therefore, NFT.storage provides you the same opportunity to use IPFS to store your data, and it provides you the unique CIDs which, which you can store on chain and use as the pointer to the content which you have created. And that becomes very handy when you think about NFTs in the long term. This tool really allows you to not only rely on someone's storage provider, but really have a persistency of your content and not rot the links which you have on, IP, uh, on the NFTs which points to the data you created. There is also a fleet hosting solution. It allows you to, for, to have a fast, modern, and censorship-proof websites and web apps 
on the open web. It really builds on top of IPFS and Filecoin where you can host your particular solution or your website on IPFS nodes and it will be served uh, to you directly from web browser Brave or a solution like this. Uh, it also is very easy to implement in your code. You can just connect it to your GitHub repository, add the build settings and deploy your site on IPFS. It's also backed by the Filecoin, which is a redundant solution and it really provides you the opportunity to make sure that your content, your website is available whenever you need it. One other solution which I want to talk with you about is the PowerGate, which provides you more functionality than, I, uh, than dot storage solutions, and which uh, gives you the powerful ways to connect and extend lib P2P solution, uh, IPFS, and Filecoin. It bridges near, and more uh, networks are coming soon, and it allows you to wrap uh, the Docker container around IPFS and file code and use it for your particular applications. And the last topic I want to touch with you today is what to build. And believe me or not, uh, there is a lot, a lot of things which you can build in Web3. We're just on the very beginning uh, of the Web3, and there are lots of opportunities which, in which you can develop uh, projects with IPFS and Filecoin. Uh, there are common uh, five major points which uh, people can focus or break down the development in the Web3 right now. First of all, you can definitely develop user and client interfaces. You can also work on smart contracts. You can develop the compute and consensus layer. And there is also a lot of opportunities on developing the hardware and networking solutions. If you're building with us or generally building in Web3, there is no need only to build apps. There is really this amount of opportunities to build your part of the Web3 and join this network of amazing developers and amazing opportunities coming all together. Filecoin, in this, uh, in this sense, creates a whole new economy with lots of opportunities to create your venture at every layer. And we support developers and builders from across the world on different scales, from a startup, from a small code development, to really startups on a high level, from investing from uh, seed to serious delay, uh, levels. And we are happy to promote and ensure that you're happy building with us and that you have all the tools and resources which help you building with IPFS and Filecoin. <laughs> Therefore, we are more than happy to welcome you in our ecosystem. We have Discord, Slack available to you at all the time. Find us on IPFS, on Filecoin, and visit our amazing hackathons and other events. Uh, there was a highlight of all the events. We also run a tremendous number of hackathons each year. So you can not only build something right now, straight away uh, on your spare time, but you can also participate in awesome uh, events. There is an If Amsterdam coming later this week where will be a lot of events also coming from our side, and we are more than happy to see you on different events and support you building with IPFS and Filecoin. That was a pleasure to have you here today, and that would be the end of my side, and thank you a lot for your attention.